The market fundamentals continue to show weakness and they are just not pretty. Now, despite that, this market continues to go up. Is it time to jump on the bandwagon and throw in the towel? Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget you can click show more for additional information and links on today's video. Also, if you're looking for a different opinion, that of Big TV and Wall Street, please do consider subscribing. So first up, I'm going to go back to something I've shown in the past, risk management. What is it about? Here you've got the market and individual equity, whatever the investment is. And you see where we are. Down here at the bottom, I'm not going to bottom feed. I'm looking for that momentum, strength, okay? And then hopefully we can capture the rest of it. Next, same thing applies like it applied back in October, December. No one knows the top, although I think it's in. And you hope to avoid the majority of that upside. So this for us is how we do risk management. Today's agenda, we're going to go to the big charts, tweets of the week, what keeps me up at night, those fundamentals that I'm talking about, and what is my game plan going forward. So let's go to the big charts. Okay, first up, we're going to take a look at the daily view. Obviously, it looks very good, but there's a couple things here that do concern me. This to me, you know, from here to here, we were down 19%. That's a pretty big 19.6 move. And then you have this really, I mean, unprecedented move back up. Now, when you look at that, a couple things. One, that's kind of a classic V. You can see it right there, all right? Meaning it went a little too much too fast. And again, we continue to go up without burst. We're just seeing volume being okay right now. Saw a report last, last week, institutional managers at their highest cash position in history. Good to know I'm not alone. Now, from there, is there anything else that I see? Sure. At the bottom of the chart, you know, this is going to be your volatility index. And it broke my line, 15. So did not make a move on Friday, waiting for that follow through this week. But you know, definitely it is setting itself up. Obviously, right now, when I look at it, there's still some other things. Let's take another quick view at another daily chart. What do we see? First off, I'm looking, we're still in a death cross situation, 50 day under the 200 day. Up top, we'll see, right? Here's relative strength, 69, 70 shows a lot of strength. This is the highest we've been so far, okay, going back quite some time. Now, what else do I see? This is short term right here, relative strength. I have it set up on a five day number. What it tells me is that we're currently overbought again. So despite that, there's no doubt that I think that we are positive short term, but I'm a little concerned about being overbought right now. Next up, let's take a look at the weekly chart. Obviously going back to the past to 99, we see patterns that look very similar to where we are. This is our trend line from 2009. Where are we? We're still below, okay? A little crazy there on that one. We're still below that trend line, so obviously that concerns me. You see these up here, that's relative strength. So it shows you a divergence, hitting highs and go, and the market again is coming up without a lot of strength. So the one positive thing is down here, okay, which is momentum on a weekly chart has crossed over, but being that we're below the trend line, right now we're neutral on this with a bias to the positive side. Okay, monthly chart looking at our long-term view, couple things I see here. There's that same negative divergence with relative strength, okay, this red dot is your 12-month moving average, good things happen above, Bad things happen below. We are right there right now. 
Again, we look for month end for final signal there. So we're right there. Could we go back above? We'll see. Okay, again. Or is it a topping process like we have seen in the past to be determined? Last up down here is going to be momentum. And momentum is still negative. A negative crossover, which as you see, we've had in 15, 16, of course, in 07, 08, and then in 2000. So I definitely respect that. And right now, when I look at our signals for the long term, they are negative. Next, real quick, let's take another look at one other chart. And this again shows strengths. New high minus new lows. What do we have here? We talked about this last year. Here's your S&P going straight up over time. All right, and new highs minus low in gray, very strong, and we hit new highs in 2018. The problem is we hit additional highs here, and look at the strength, right? Very weak. So here we are again, right? We're moving ourselves back up, and very little strength. Had a little surge on Friday, 144 new highs minus new lows. So again, another thing that shows me Underneath, we're not seeing that push to drive us to the upside. Next up, let's take a look at treasuries. What do we see? Well, first off, Friday, everyone was gaga about the umpteenth announcement about a trade deal, okay? And at the same time, the bond market was telling us something different. What is that? Well, take a look. One is, look at the trend on bonds down, okay? That should not be happening if the market is strong as it is. Number two, most importantly, yield spread. 10-year treasury minus two-year treasury is your yield spread, okay? And right now, quietly, we've gone to 0.14, one of our lowest levels we have seen in quite some time. And again, why is this so important? Because every time, not sometimes, every time yield spreads invert, go below zero, we enter a recession. So maybe the Fed does know what they're doing, right? You see a inverted yield, there's your recession in red. So you have to pay attention to the overall bond market. Next up, tweets of the week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, M-P-L-L-W-S. First up, we have Andrew Thrasher, new to our Tweets of the Week. He's looking at earnings per share, excluding financial growth in the U.S., Japan, and Europe, which has moved negative for the first time since 2016. Great follow, link below. Next up, another new one, fact sheet, S&P companies with more global exposure, are reporting lower earnings and revenue growth in Q4. Your trend is not in a friend. Great follow information below. Next up, what keeps me up at night? <gasps> okay, from our friends at Hedgeye. I love their cartoons. The national debt went to $22 trillion. This is such a problem that is not being addressed. Definitely keeps me up at night. How about last week? Now. When I spend a week and I research for these videos, I have a file of ideas and charts. I had 22 charts in my file that I could show today that's showing weakness. This is just the highlights. These are the fundamentals that are keeping me awake at night. Year over year, retail sales. Biggest drop in history right over here. Ugly. Okay, slowing. Germany factory orders. Post biggest year-over-year -year drop since 2012. Germany's 30% of production in the European zone. If they're going down, everybody's going down. How about this one? You take a look at this, everything's going with that way. Why? That is projected earnings. Now, everyone's saying, oh, it's been a big earning period. We're about 14%, okay? But... It's down from 24%, we're looking at 6%, then 0%. If you're buying companies, you're buying based on future expectations, and that's the line of earnings, and that what keeps me 
underweight right now. Another big one last week. Wow, what a drop off. Baltic Dry Index, information below on what that is. It's shipping, shipping costs, all the shipping that's going out, and it runs pretty consistent with the S&P. Purple line is Baltic Dry Index, S&P is there, and then you look here. Big, big divergence. This has dropped off the cliff, and yet the S&P continues on another one. So, when you look at the Fed and what's going on, I went back the last, just here in this case, to 1995, and guess what? Everyone was talking about the Fed pausing. They did it for a reason. They did it here. They did it here because everything is slowing. Earnings is slowing, right? It doesn't make sense. The bond market's going down. Inflation. We got a number on Friday going down. So here's where we are today at 2.2. Previous times, 5 and 6%. They had ammunition. They have very little ammunition right now. Last one. Okay, everybody was gaga Friday about talks. Folks, come on. It's like the market moved this week. They're looking for something. When we had the shutdown, when it actually opened back up. But when it shut down, nothing happened to the market. Why is this happening? I don't understand. This China thing, we know that our president is infatuated with the stock market, will do and say anything to keep it going up. But you look at trade China, okay? Trade in China, excuse me, right? Why would the Chinese make a deal, okay? They are flat out in a recession right now. They've been in a bear market since January of 18. They're struggling right now. Any deal they make is just going to hurt them even more. So whether they get a deal or not, let's be clear. The data is slowing, and that's what keeps me up at night. Next up, let's talk about our game plan. Okay, what's on my radar and game plan going forward? I could continue to be in utilities, healthcare, treasuries, gold, okay? All of these and REITs. These are the sectors that do well end of cycle. All of them have done very well as interest rates continue to go down. A lot of people are saying rates are going up, but we're going down. Why? Because we're slowing. Why else? How about the fact inflation came in lower? We have another lower high on inflation. So those sectors, I'm going to add to those this week. I am still not ready to jump in high beta. Obviously, I already missed the part. I talked about that in the last video. So buying at these levels, overbought conditions does not make a lot of sense at this time. Wrapping things up, fear and greed. 62 weeks ago, meaning 62 weeks ago, and it's 70 last week. Yes, greed is back in favor, it seems. Signals are positive, neutral, negative. Really, the neutral, the midweek there, you look at it changing possibly. But overall, we continue to be cautious. This is Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV.